right, all right, all right. Greetings and welcome back once again. This is Amuna, and you don't know already. I pray everybody is doing well. Look, I'm well rested up, Amuna. You understand? This is my rest day. I have seen when I came back, I saw all the comments, all the shout outs. Give thanks to everybody. You don't know after this, I'm going to drop down in the comment section and, and, and talk to you, you know, one are we and, and like and share and all of those stuff. But I had to go ahead and get into this today. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. Let me go. How are you doing today? How are you doing today? Before we get into this, I know I announced that this is the last of the series, the finale of the series. And as I announce it, and all of the outpouring is like, Amona, this series can done. Oh, you mean the series done? Come on, we've been going, y'all. Even though there's more to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? There is more to go, but for the sake of maybe we might have to do some bonus because I did say that I was going to go into, hold on. I did say I was going to go into the estate and that's a whole nother situation. So this conversation brings us up sadly to Nesta's departure, right? So that's kind of what we're going to go over today. A little bit of the aftermath, right? Of what happens um, when he passes without a will. So we're going to go into that. And like I said, greetings and welcome to everybody who's just joined us. UK Massive, my apologies. But me just I come off of my sabbatical and me know it kind of late over there. So, so if you got to catch it on the replay, we're sending you guys love. You know what I mean? Don't get your sleep. Get your sleep. You know what I mean? Get your sleep. But what was I going to say? Yeah, if we at a later time touch on the estate conversation that's in the books, that's going to have to be like some bonus material. You know what I mean? We're going to get a little bit into this colorism. We're going to get a little bit into um, Marcus Garvey. And so trust me, it's like a circle back. It's like a final way to come back and tie itself in. But with that said, the last time we left off, all right? The last time we left off, um, what we left off last time. Oh, Don Taylor, you're fired, right? Now I'm like, wait a minute. Great to everybody. Sending you love and light and, and peace and healing and strength and everything, right? Take time, take time. Um, so the last time we left off, Don Taylor, did I get rough up? Rough up at Don Taylor. And I'm, everybody's like, yo, why are you roughing up Don Taylor? So before we get into the readings, I want to show, this is post roughed up Don Taylor. This is, this is, um, Don Taylor, who was fired. This is Don Taylor, who really wasn't around Bob at the end. And I'm going to show, because I came across a video of Don Taylor at Bob Marley's funeral. Okay. And remember, Don Taylor, um, well, if you read his book, he's like, he's still considered Bob a friend, even though he couldn't work with him anymore. And so this is him when his other friends didn't attend his funeral. Don Taylor did. And so I'm going to get this video before I get into these reeling real quick. And you guys tell me about what you think about Don Taylor at Bob Marley's funeral. So. I'm not supposed to be in your room. You were told the camera. Who those people that are Don't get no people on that. Please, 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 please. I'm not supposed to be in your room. You were told the camera. Who those people that are Don't get no people on that. Please, 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 I have, I have never abused it in, in this situation. I have never abused it all my life. Thank you. I've never abused it. I've never abused it. So there's no just me that that's going to be. Nobody here can be able to do it. Don't tell them that. But I'm big. Don't tell them. Well, you don't want any. Don't tell them. 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 But don't you know the camera that's no, in your box? No, no. Don't you know that? No. Don't Did you know that? No. Don't even know that. No, don't tell me. You can tell what me. What's the way to the right? What? You don't talk to me, so please, because I don't talk to you, sir. No, I don't No, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. When I say that, if, if something's done wrong, you can talk to me differently, because I, would, if, if I wouldn't do you, so if, 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 if something goes wrong. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Uh, That's what I am saying. Uh, we just think everybody. No, right now, we're going to Right now, we're going to take Hold on. You don't talk to me. You know, there's no other. Why would you let him? Come here. You have 
10 news media, we don't let you nobody. You, you, how long have you, you, been, you, long have you been here? Have you been here every I've been here all morning. No, man, no, no. But I, but I have been here continuously oh, this from, from 12 o'clock last night. Yeah, like FBI, I told the FBI. And every FBI told him, told everybody, yeah, no man. camera. So how did they manage to get I've been brought here. This is why the management said it's complex. But even now, you don't know what since this morning, everybody come and take a picture of the people and fire them. That's what they're doing. Nobody put the camera on the foot. I know, can't speak that. I respect that. But we have a meet. We have a meet, right? I will put it up, right? All I have to do, you didn't even have to do it. I respect that. I don't want to respect me, you don't. Anyhow. Yeah, you can see that. So that was, and sorry for the noise, it was a little noise, but hopefully you were able to decipher the Jamaican, it's, it's the when the guy said, if you talk to me differently, Dan Taylor, talk to me differently. I'm like, yo, deciphering Jamaican argument. So for those who just tuned in and wondering what in the world just happened, right? So Don Taylor is in his feelings, okay? Even though he's no longer the manager, can you imagine what kind of manager he was? He was in his feelings because he's like, look, bro, I told y'all no cameras. Do not put the camera on Bob in the casket. We don't appreciate it. I already gave y'all the orders. What's this? So he's beasting on, I think that's the representative either for, for ABC or some network. He's beasting on the guy. Like, yo, I told you guys, no cameras in here. What are you doing? Remember, this is after he get the beat up, after all of this stuff, He uh, he's still doing what he knows how to do, right? And so when I saw that, just a little space, just a little space in my heart for Don Taylor's relationship with Nesta because it doesn't look like he was necessarily doing it for the camera. He was doing it for, um, he was doing it for whether or not this is what the family agreed upon. And he's trying to enforce to make sure that this is not the case, that they don't catch him in this position that they don't necessarily want the world to see him in. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was interesting. And the guy who was like, don't talk to me, so Dan Taylor, talk to me differently. Yes, he was protecting him in his death. That's what I thought. I thought it was genuine and I thought he was protecting him at the end, which was like, wow, I have to show this because we're gonna go read now a little bit about what was happening. He's, he was protecting him. He was protecting his image. He was protecting his likeness. He was, he, whatever was, he was like, yo, he was going to go in on the news reporter guy. <laughs> Don't talk to me, so Don Tila. It's the way the guy lurched forward, like, like pushed him with his shoulder. He was doing the most. He was doing the most. Okay. So we are, we are going to, um, oh, which one is Don? Don is the little one with the, like the short little Afro. He was on, um, he was on the right side of the screen and he had that like open shirt situation going on. I'm like, Don, so you was here all day. Why is your shirt front open at the funeral, Don? But anywho, um, I think the way he handled that to me was showing that, hey, he was still in, a, in protective mode, still in that manager mode. So with that said, uh, um, yeah, we did not go into depth about, although some books do, namely Sadella's book does, into, into his passing uh, and how the friends, and Skill Cole is also mentioned here, how the friends treated him at the end. I think it's worthy of uh, taking a look into, but we would be on this series for 102 days if we went into everything. <laughs> yeah, don't give me no joke today. <laughs> Let me start reading. So right now we're going to talk about the aftermath, uh, friends, foes, and family. We're going to talk about the aftermath. We're not going to go all the way, all the way into the estate, but this is what you're looking at here is like right after this situation that happened. So this is coming from Rita's book. Rita. Make us where Rita said no. And I, there was a picture that I shared of Don Taylor and Rita in what looks like uh, Sadella's Miami house having this conversation of what, what the estate, because a lot of the things are in uh, the bank accounts, the money, everything is still in Don Taylor's name, right? And so he has to now find a way to transfer it over to, I'm trying to just switch my thing here. He's transferring it over to Rita. So let's go first to Rita. And for those who just join us, we are reading live. 
We are reading live. Okay. Bob's passing. This is chapter 13. Bob's passing was a downfall for me. He was my strength, my man, my first heart. I had never experienced a death in the family since being an, becoming an adult. It was as if part of her went emotionally and spiritually, even physically, because just the fact that he wasn't there felt strange to wake up the next day and not be able to look at him. For her, death is not the end of life. I'm going to, sometime I'm switching between. She believes the spirit continues and believe in reincarnation in a positive way. And if you see a lot of the interviews with her, you will see um, when they say, so when Bob passed and Rita will be like, Bob passed, Bob not dead. But it's the way she like glitch real quick. I'm like, Okay. But I understood for the first time that sensation of something missing when you lose a person's physical presence. Bob passed a month after receiving his Jamaica's Order of Merit, one of the country's highest honors. I had to bring his remains from Miami to Kingston. Because as we remember, I didn't read the part, but he's in transit. When they told him that they could no longer do anything for him and that he has a short time, the guy who was Dr. Issel's clinic, who he was at, which is a whole nother conversation, he decides he can't do anything for him. And, and one quick thing is, is they weren't supposed to be feeding him a certain kind of food. And then in one of the chapters, <sighs> Sadella is feeding him, his mother's feeding him Bami. Bami? Cassava? And he's not supposed to be having hard food? Anyway, that caused him to have belly issues, and the story continues from there. But let's continue. It says here, so she has to fly him because he they landed in Miami, and he didn't make it back to Jamaica. She says, we could have taken him anywhere we wanted, but we brought him to Jamaica, which was fitting, at least for the time being, because of the most fitting place would be Africa, the place he dreamed about and saw himself. And we're looking forward to doing that someday. Let his bones be in the earth of Africa. That was his dream. But we brought him to Jamaica for many reasons. And we can see for many reasons. And shout out to everybody who's just joined us. Exactly. The Esau's Clinic is a whole nother conversation. Like I said, there may be one or two bonus mini things down the line. But this is the bulk of it. It says, for two days, his body lay in state in the National Arena in Kingston. He had one arm over his guitar and a Bible in his other hand. Tens of thousands of people came to play their respects. So the way he was uncovered, if you just missed the Don Taylor video, if the video camera would have gone, the video camera would have taken him in that state. It was for the people to see him, not to memorialize it, I suppose, on video. And so Don Taylor was kind of really uh, protective over his image in that way and wouldn't allow that. I will show it again in a little bit. It says there were musical tributes on every street in Kingston, not only all Jamaica, but representatives from everywhere in the world turned out to his funeral. The leaders of both political parties spoke and I saw a video. I didn't get to clip it, but I saw Siaga speaking. I was like, what Siaga speaking at? Cause he had just turned prime minister at the time, right? It says here, where are we here? The I-3s, and, and that video does show the I-3s were singing, Bob's mo mother sang, as did the new group of Marley, Sharon, Sadella, Ziggy, and Steven. And if you see a video, you'll see like Ziggy doing crazy legs on the stage and spinning around and doing, he was over there doing, you know, he was doing crazy legs on the stage, calling themselves the Melody Makers. Then... The coffin was driven 75 miles to St. Anne and placed in a mausoleum made of local stone. And you see people even today, I, I recently saw a YouTuber, or not a YouTuber, a vlogger going to St. Anne and visiting the mausoleum and all of the things that they have going on there, right? So to this day, people still go. It says, we, the Marley family, did all the arrangements with the help of her friend, Eleanor Wint, a professor at the university, and Lorna Wainwright, who still works with us. Those were bosom buddies, along with, of course, Minnie, Marcia, and Judy. She says that she must mention also the great support they got from Babsy Grange, who later became Jamaica Labor Party senator. She made sure the Bob had an official grand send-off. So, Rita says, she was fortunate in having friends and sisters 
who, when she was unable to think straight, would say, listen, man, wouldn't go for that. Sorry. Listen, man, we've got to do this thing. So she had a support system, essentially, which is good because, you know, that was a lot for her um, at that time. Right. It's like when he was going through it, they took away the power. They wouldn't even tell her what was going on until after the fact. And then, you know, now that the responsibility goes back into the hands that of his next of kin, she has a support system that's able to help her through. Let's see here. Which about me there? It had to be done. And my friend said, oh, don't even think of quitting until certain things are accomplished. Having that help and support was crucial because with it, she was able to get through all the ceremonial public aspect of the funeral. And auntie was there too. She was around for a good time after Bob's death. She lived to see better days. Rita goes on to say, I felt in a particular, sorry, peculiar position of being in the middle of it and aware that it was happening, but faulting above thinking it just couldn't be. And that often happens with grieving that you're, you're going through the motions, but there's kind of like a, a mental disconnect. Um, a lot of the stuff you get into this mental fog and you know, you're going through, but it all is just foggy. She says, I kept on the denial, on denial. No, no, this is not happening. I'm here, but I'm not here. This is not the end. And we again, we could kind of see that when she interviews, right? The grieving process, they say, has five stages of grief. But if denial is one of them, but if you get if if you get stuck in that stage is when it becomes unhealthy. You know, there's not a predetermined time of how long the stages last, but when you refuse, like you go through the bargaining stage, you go through the denial stage and the self-blame stage. But if you get stuck right now, she's giving us one of those stages of grief, which is denial. It says, this is not the end. This is all a bad dream kind of thing. I stayed this way for a long time afterwards. Bob, he was tired. He was really tired. And we could tell by what we read the last time. She says, and I saw him disappear. Yet even now, if people say to me when Bob died, and it's true, because I've seen a number of videos, she'd be like, Bob died? I'll say, Bob didn't die. That part is true. Then look at me like, what? But I still have that feeling in me that he didn't die. He's somewhere. And she says she'll see him sometime. So to a certain degree, she's still in denial phase that he's no longer on this plane, right? Yes, you have his music. You have his offspring. You have his memories, right? But in this case, if he didn't die, then nobody else died either. Like, you can't be like, Bob didn't die, but everybody else is no longer here. It like, how do you reason with passing um, and does it apply across the board, right? She goes on to say, this is the uh, the aftermath, friends, family, and foes for those who just joined us, okay? Because when I first read this part, I was like, huh? Again, this is what Rita says happened. It wasn't until after the funeral that all hell broke loose. I really didn't have time to mourn. I could only imagine, right? Because I had to go right into meeting with the good, the bad, and the ugly. It wasn't Bob's passing without a will or a letter. Sorry, it wasn't easy, Bob's passing without a will or letter or something. And again, come on, Nesta. Everybody was around and he knew what they wanted. Why he didn't do it? Mm. Different people say different things. It goes on to say, when I didn't see Peter and Bunny at the funeral, I took note of it. Oh, they're not here, nor did they offer to help or attend any of the functions. So even if they didn't attend the funeral, they didn't attend any of the functions either, she's saying. And this, she says, blew her mind. At the point I said to myself, this is unbelievable. Although I didn't have time to really focus on them. But after the ceremonies were over and a few months had passed, a lot of things came up. And I'm saying, wow, this is a load I don't think I can carry alone. I'd love to reach out to Bonnie and Peter, ask them to participate in this legacy. It wasn't even about money. The assets, music was the main one. We're more than money, but valueless without proper administration. That would take careful planning and considering that Bob didn't leave a will, anything could happen. So according to she, she said, oh, them no reach. Nobody no reach out for even say, yo, oh, not do all things ago. 
I can't she no no call no show and then she's thinking okay what happens afterwards so she begins looking for the other whalers according to her and let's see what happens so i called bonnie and peter to say that i would love to have a meeting and invited them to come to the tough gun office at 56 hope road i said you know it seems only reasonable for you guys to be the ones who come together with me. And I prayed that to myself, even though I knew about the different conflicts and problems that had divided the group in the past. But I put that aside at this point and told myself there was room to start anew. And let this be the line that might reopen the door. So we remember they broke up. What's this? 81? They broke up 73, 74, broke up. Can't Bob, we never really be break up, right? So they separated and went their own ways. Um, and so she's like, yo, but one of the one of your members have passed. So surely this is gonna make you want to come together. But right away, Bonnie and Peter arrived with an attitude. First, they were hostile to the guard at the gate. Oh, I'm this BC and blah blah blah. It's the way Rita goes with the blah, blah, blah. It's just, and Ray, Tay, Tay, you know? But I took them upstairs to the office. So how are they just going to arrive at Hope Road, according to Rita, and, and get in a mood? It says, but I took them upstairs to the office at Hope Road. Everything around had to do with Bob. Not only the record shop, but photographs, posters from concerts, memorabilia, all that kind of stuff. Suddenly, to my horror, Peter started to pull down Bob picture off of the wall. Pull down Bob picture. And he said he didn't want to see no dead man. Unbelievable. Don't want to see no dead man. Pull it down. Eh, eh, BC. And Bob not even a year gone and everybody still mourning. When I first read that, I was like, because remember the last time they left Hope Road, they didn't bus bus yet. Bob doesn't bus till afterwards, right? And so it could be a lot of things that is going on in this conversation. Um, but according to him, in according to Rita, in my favorite one, pull long, pull long, pull long, everything off I while. I couldn't believe this. I hadn't realized the depth of Peter's animosity and the extent of the power struggle, the grievance grievance that was held even to the grave and bunny was very much the same adamant his position was that bob's death had been the wages of his sin and corruption wait you can't see me thing the wages of his sin and corruption and i told myself at that very moment that one day i was going to talk about this because people might need to know it was not easy to see and hear so she figure no, she don't see them. She gonna reach out to see how to chart the way forward because according to her, when Bob started that island, she was out of the loop. She didn't know what was going on. She don't know nothing about no no real business situation. She was just a paid um paid um work for hire, right? Uh, and that that situation comes up later with some other band members not really understanding work for hire means anything you produce while you are working doesn't belong to you. Right. And so some people be like, yeah, I was there. I was creating. But if it's a work for hire situation, once they pay you, it's done. So, again, that's the next side of the music situation. But she says she call me and then get on the moon. So and start crab off that and take off that man. What you do? Anyway, it says here. But she says she mark it. She says stick up in. She go come tell people about this later. OK. It says. And in the face of my intention to include them to say, hey, guys, let's continue this work. But they said they were going to come in and take over and they were going to change this and change that. And then didn't want to see no Bob picture hang up because he's dead. I could close the place down and start anew. Wow. 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 This is a coin to Rita now. I kept my cool and said I was very surprised at the reaction, though all the while I was thinking this can't work. 
Then Bunny said to me, and I have been waiting 20 years for these words to be in print. So Rita says she had 20 year old belly. She's been waiting for 20 years for say this. Okay. You ready? I'm not ready for what she did I wait for say. We are ready for where did I go say Mama Rita? What did you wait 20 years for say? Then Bunny said to me, and I had been waiting 20 years for these words to be in print. If I would come and work for them, give up what I had begun to do, I looked at them and could only think they must be crazy. So basically, she has said, Bunny say, forget that. Come work for me now. I just want, remember when I said that whole open letter um, about Rita Marley? It was giving, it was giving belly. It was giving like vitriol. It was giving venom. You understand? And I'm like, what happened? What happened? Well, according to Rita, Bunny, give her proposition. Them come and want to come take over the thing. And she said, no. So, we can't see how you could be big mad after of that. We can't see it. But let's continue. I'm going to come to the comment section in a second. Right now, we're on the first of the aftermath. Mm, 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 mm. And to think she's a widow. So, not only did she go through all of what she went through, now you're a widow with all of this confusion swirling around. You don't know left from right at this point. And you're trying to reach out to some type of familiarity, some type of people who know the runnings. And they was like, hey, girl, come out of the way and make me take over this. Ooh, you need me, lads. Sorry, I just put that in there, but let's continue. Ooh, hoo, hoo. It says here, we shot with them now. I looked at them and said, and could only think they must be crazy. And then I remembered how bewildered I'd been when I had come into the picture years before. But Back then, I was so used to women like auntie and fat auntie that I was shocked to discover that to some Jamaican men, women were for sex, cooking, washing clothes, having babies, shutting up and taking licks. Shout out to everybody who have just joined us. Welcome to the conversation. She says, when they were gone, I told myself, no, no, no. This is where I put on my armor suit. It's time to fight. Seems like they're going to be war. Everywhere is war. Do, 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 A war, she say. I'm glad she realized sooner than later. Seems like there's going to be a war here. Bob passed in 1981. And in 82, the war started. By then, we had to form an estate. And the lawyer would not allow anyone to just come in and do what they wanted. Everything had to be done legally because the wife and children and sorry, between the wife, the children and the trust and the estate. And it, that, he could have formed an estate when, anyway, that has done gone through the gate. And if that was Bonnie and Peter's attitude and they were planning to come in and take away everything, then neither the children nor I would have anything, she says. We had a battle, man. I had a battle. Those people who I thought would embrace me and support me just to keep Bob's musical legacy going, I did not know that they were carrying such grudges and only wanted revenge, she says. When I realized this, I said, oh, no. I sat down with my family to discuss the situation and they agreed that no, this could not be right. So I had to turn my wheels and this is when Rita Marley Music came into the picture. I established my own company and called it RMM, which still means Robert Marley Music because I am R and he's R. So it's Rita and Robbie, whatever way you want to look at it. I'm going to pause there. Because as we can see, there's more pages. The estate thing gets sticky. But that was the aftermath. Imagine. Let me do that. Can you imagine? Right after the funeral, things get sticky. She had tried to figure out how the thing was going to go. And you try to reach out to man and man and, and those who were there. And then basically say, Go, girl, move out of the way and deal with this. That was crazy. That was crazy. All right, for those who just joined us, I'm going to run back the Don Taylor situation. Turn If it come on a little loud, it's, it's not me, it's the, 
it's the way the, the video was. But I'm going to show again for those who just joined us, Don Taylor at the funeral. I'm going to read Don Taylor last because Don Taylor is a little more, he gives a little more some situation to the situation. And so I'm going to read Sadella next, but here we go. Let's watch Don Taylor at Bob Marley's funeral defending the thing. No, I'm not supposed to be in here. You were told the camera. Who don't speak to me like that? Please don't speak to me like that. 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 Please don't speak to me like and, and, and you never see that. Don't you know that? No, no. you know that? No. Then you know that? No. Him know that? Don't talk to you. What? Don't talk to me. 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 Don't Don't talk to me. Don't talk to when I say that, if, if something is done wrong, you can talk to me differently because I, would, if, I wouldn't do you so if, 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 if something goes wrong. Yeah, That's all I'm saying. Uh, That's what I am uh, saying. We just think everybody. No, no, right now, we're we're right now, make them my attack on them. Hold on, you don't talk to me. You know, there's no other. Why we should let in? Come here, you have 10 news media. We don't let in nobody. You, how long have you been here? How long have you been here? Have you been here every day? I've been here all morning. No, man, no, no. But I, but I have been here continuously. Oh, this point from 12 o'clock last night. Yeah, FBI, I, I told the FBI. And every FBI told him, told everybody, yeah, no camera. So how did they manage to get I've been brought here. This is why the management said it's complex. But even now, you don't know, but since this morning, everybody come and take a picture of the people and fire them. That's what they're doing. Nobody put the camera up on the foot. I know, can't speak. I respect. But we have a meeting. We have a meeting, right? I will put it up, right? All I have to do, you didn't even have to do it. I respect what I want. I respect me, you too. Anyhow. 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 Why did he give Don Taylor the elbow in the shoulder, though? <laughs> but again, for those who just joined us, why did I show that? Because because there's a lot of narrative going on. I wasn't there, right? Uh, we're getting a lot of hearsay. And this is why we're also going over this series. And just to see that he didn't have to, right? This is long after. he He's no longer working with him. He didn't have to. But the protective nature of someone that he used to work with, someone he considered a friend, he's still protecting him at the end, which I just found something that is noteworthy. At bare minimum, it is noteworthy. So with that said, we are going to jump over to, hold on, let me, let me change my thing, that's all. We're going to jump over to Sadella here, because at this point, everybody is wondering, hold the thing I'm going to go. Oh, the thing I go go. Where the money I go come from? Because Bob, according to Sadella, I don't remember if I read this part. When Bob told her when Mr. Booker died, and he was like, "Mama, you have to go leave." I think I read it. Or I'm not sure. Don Taylor started looking for a house in Miami, but Bob was living at Don Taylor's house and was ready to go at his own house. So he encouraged his mother to move to Miami. His mother agreed, but she wasn't there when the house was bought. And because she wasn't there when the house was bought, the house went into Bob Marley's name and it wasn't in his mother's name and they never transferred it over. Give me one second. So because it wasn't transferred over, it created a problem because he was also paying the mortgage and the name was in his name, the house was his name, which makes the house going to the estate when time came, right? So let's go. This is Sadala Madabuka. There was a funeral for Nesta in Jamaica, a funeral to end all funerals. It was held in the, in the stadium of National Arena on the 21st of May, 1981. Thousands upon thousands attended, coming and hanging their heads in sorrow to pay their last respect to Nesta. And we, you know, this is her son, her firstborn son. So we went with the whole journey 
this is very different from Rita's telling, which is her husband. But this is Sadella, firstborn son that she's been through a lot with, right? It says here, and he was young. It says here, big shots were there, as well as medium-sized shots. Not medium-sized shots. And little shots, the power and the weak standing and sitting shoulder to shoulder. The mourners range from then lately elected Prime Minister Edward Siaga to then recently defeated former Prime Minister Michael Manley to humble barefoot vendors who sold roasted peanuts on dirty streets from whistling pushcarts. They were all there in the National Stadium that day. The vain, the humble, the wicked, the innocent, the cruel, the kind-hearted, the rich, the poor. All mixed up, mixed up side by side in their Sunday best, bowing head for Nesta, crying tears for Nesta, shuffling foot for Nesta, singing hymns for Nesta, murmuring prayers for Nesta, every face lined and creased with woe and sorrow. Tears fell that day like rain from heaven. Men cried, women cried, gunman cried, bad man cried, good man cried. Even children who didn't understand what was happening bowed their heads and cried when they saw tears freely flowing without shame down the face of mama, grandmama, papa, auntie, and uncle, all weeping, mourning over the passing of the firstborn. She says, my own son, Nesta. Now this makes me almost want to read, because uh, his is not long. I'm going to have to get... Kimani's book, because the sad part about this, as his grandmother is recounting the scene, Kimani is left behind in, um, in where is he from? Trelawney, he's left behind in the country. No one brought him to the funeral. And so he laments of all of these strangers were even there to be able to see his father for the last time. And he wasn't able to be there, right? And this is also another thing that he carries and he shared in his book. It says, Nesta had been eaten up by months of dreadful suffering, by even wasting by cancer and death. He still stood out in distinction. The mortician who prepared his body told Diane that he had never dressed a deceased man with such beautiful hands. She said his fingers were long and graceful. Remarked that now she understood how he was able to play such soulful music on the, the, oh, sorry, on the guitar because of his wonderful hands. The memorial service was conducted by ministers of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. But that day, whether the worshiper was Catholic or Protestant, Methodist, Adventist, Christian or Jew, there was just one common mournful feeling uniting all who knelt or bended knee, whether to Josh, she says, or Jesus Christ, or to Allah, or to Jehovah, or to um, Haley Selassie. Nestor Robert Marley, whose song over the years had gladdened their hearts, had been snatched from their midst in the prime and flower of his green years. In this sadness and grief, they came together and wept as one. That is a picture painted, eh? She said, I was like, I was like there, but not there. Same thing Rita is saying. Like I was in my body, but out of the body at the same time watching from some place on high. I heard the words, but I didn't hear the words. I saw the colors, but didn't see the colors. Felt the pain, but didn't feel the pain. That day was a blur, a dream, a haze, a vision. I was like one who saw without eyes, heard without ears, spoke without tongue. She says, oh, Jairastafari, that day of grief was the heaviest day of her life. Because again, you have to understand that everybody's seeing it from a different perspective. And this is a mother, a young mother who bore her son and brought him up and even warned him as he was going into the music industry and telling him about her concerns. Remember that part? Um, and then it comes to this, right? All of these things running through the mind of, of people. Later, I would groan under a second day of heavy and terrible, although that would be the pain of a latter time, a different day. She says, but the, that day she buried Nesta was cruel. And even now she bends under the weight of the terrible memory. Let me jump down here. The line of mourners stretch all the way from Kingston to nine miles. And remember, according to, that's like over 75 miles, right? And every country road and winding lane was crammed with, crammed with people straining to catch a last glimpse of Nesta. People clung to the tree, to the bush, to Rockstone, to rooftop, scratching and crowning neck to see the procession winding slowly down the narrow country road. The hearse bruising against roadside bush, traveling through familiar fields, 
and mountain lands where Nesta and Skylarked as a boy and walked as a man. And someone has the footage of the people. It's on the internet. The people, it's as she's describing it, that was the scene, right? It says here, that day was spectacular. A wonderful, a wonder. The police surgeon who came down the hillside to escort me to the site of Nesta's final resting place murmured to her as he elbowed our way through the pressing crowd. I never beheld anything like this in my whole life, the policeman says. That day she sung a song. Hold on, that, let me jump down here. So she sang a song. When this most grievous, this longest day in her life eventually and thankfully ended, Nesta had been laid to rest. But his body wasn't even cold in the tomb before the scavengers began over his worldly goods. It's the same thing Rita said. She's describing it in the same way. Sorry, let me get a little drink of water. It's the same thing Rita said, you know, understandably they're going through grief and they're not able to fully grieve because here we go. <clears throat> it began with a meeting in the offices of George Desnos, a Kingston lawyer. There were about nine people who met that morning. Chris Blackwell was present, as were Don Taylor, Rita, Lewis Biles, a banker, administrator of the estate, plus a donkey hamper full of lawyers. The meeting began with George Desnos reading a statute of their dirty Babylonian law to me. Okay, I'm just, let me take a moment. Let's take a moment right now because before we get into <laughs> Sadella's wordplay, let me just take a moment as we just process that scene just now. I'm going to take a little moment here. Hmm. I just wanted to take a moment because Sadella is about to go left. So, so she says the lawyers began reading the dirty Babylonian law. He read it carefully from start to finish, cracking big words in his mouth like he was chewing peanuts. He said that Nesta had died interstate and by the dirty law, everything he'd left on earth would go to his lawful wife and children. Why she called it the dirty law? When, when Norvo died and she was the lawful wife and child and Nesta was the child, she was looking for his wife and his children, which would be her and Nesta to get something. So why now is it dirty law? I don't know. Everything he'd left on earth would go to his lawful wife and his children. The mother's portion was a puff of breeze, nothing. I looked around the room and I said unto them, all you people gather here this morning discussing Lana money. If it wasn't for me, the mother, none of you would have even be would be here. Not a one. Sadella, Sadella, Sadella. Not the dirty Babylonian law. Sadella. So Sadella vexed now, you know. She said, if I never have me, I don't want there. Mm-hmm. I told you she was about to go left, y'all. Uh, there was an uncomfortable silence in the room. Then, sorry, they all glanced at each other. Like, what the bad side is going on here? Madabuka, are you well? Eyebrows knitted up and mouth showing purse string. All right, mom, Rita said bravely. Whatever I get, I will give you 50-50. Yet, I looked so this is Sadella saying Rita saying this. Sadella was there in Germany, the time that Bob is in Germany. She's there. She's, she's there. She's sitting with him. She's talking with him. She's all of that. He doesn't look to secure you at that point, mom. Diane Jobson is there. If I'm not mistaken, is she a lawyer? Because she's there. And he doesn't secure anyone. Much like Norvo didn't secure anyone, not like he had much to secure them with. He had more than his, his, his father had to secure, and he didn't. And now he has how many children? 
And Rita jumps up and says that she would give 50-50. Yet I looked at the assembled parties, all of whom wanted something from Nesta, who would eat food gained from Nesta's talents, who would buy house and motor car from money my son had earned by the set of his bro. But I'll continue, but Don Taylor contributed because he helped Nesta to get on the level that he was. Rita contributed because, well, she was there <laughs> and helped his children to come into existence. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, she says, and I scorned them all for before my eyes, they seemed small and pettifogging. Whatever pettifogging is. I'm going to have to look that word up. Yo, y'all tell me what's pettifogging for me. I don't want to stop the stream to go find out. But that's an interesting word there. Anyway, what they were telling me was that I, the rightful mother, who had given life to the man whose talents and earnings were now filling their bellies, didn't belong in this room with them, that I might as well leave right now. And I did leave. So she looked like she was P.O.'d. Because they were like, Mom Dukes, Anna, you're taught this. I left them with the bitter taste of shame in their mouths. For after I arrived back in Miami, I got a letter from the administrator saying that I was to be allowed maintenance of $3,000 per month from the estate. After that first meeting, I was kept in the dark. I would occasionally call Rita to ask her what was going on. And she would say harshly, like what? Nothing is going on or not Naguan. Nobody was telling me anything. But as I told Rita, the time will come when I will know all, when all will be fully revealed to me. Remember, at this time, she's a widow. Uh, her husband, Mr. Booker, dies. I don't know if she's getting his retirement or if she's getting substance from that, but Nesta put her, give her a house. Nesta, remember she wanted a Cadillac from Don Taylor and Don Taylor was like, Oh, the Cadillac is too big. So Nesta bought her all these things, but now she doesn't have any way to maintain herself. Right. And so she's like, yo, where's the money going to come from? Things went on. Sometimes I would phone Rita and she would talk hard to me like she was quarreling. Soon the children began to get the idea that I was being greedy and troublesome. Nobody called me. In the, sca in the scavenging over Nesta's estate, family feeling had been forgotten. I tried to show the children the best face so they could understand that I bore no one any malice and felt nothing but love for Nesta's seed. But there was a definite distinction going on in the family and togetherness had gone out the window. So she's accusing right now. The family, well, I guess she's pointing to Rita because Rita would be now, after Don Taylor transferred, the head of the state, right? That she's not, she's not in the loop. So when they said they got ready for war, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's continue. She goes on to say, everybody was going on like in high, a high ranking, while the poor mother, who was not high society, had nothing to mark her identity, was just pushed off to one side and left to rot. I'm going to try to just, I don't know how I'm feeling about this conversation, so I'm going to just keep going. The news carriers went to work on what little family feeling was left, like John Crow yamming up dead mule pan roadside. They spread lies and rumors about me to build up strife and stir up bad feelings. I'm going to resist singing. People would come to my doorstep spreading gossip about Rita, saying what and what she was doing with Nesta Money. Who is the people? Whatever I say, Marabuka, you wouldn't believe so when we said this, Rita buy what there with Nesta money. She out there spin up the whole of Nesta money, and that's why you're not getting on Mama Reed, Mama Buka. And who is this news carrier? I would tell them, listen, get out of my yard. Don't come here and talk about Rita like that. I'm going to have to go. I'm Y'all help me. <laughs> Yo. 
Oh, Father, give us the strength. Yo, I said this was going to be the last one. Why? I should have left Sadella for last because she always tickles me, son. Yo, she said, she said. <laughs> I would tell them, listen, get out of my yard. Don't come in here and talk about Rita like that. Don't come here and call Rita name to me yes, but I'm sure she don't know you. How come you ain't tell us who it was? Usually you drop names, right? How come you didn't tell us who was the news carrier? We want to know too. During this time of tribulation, I got down and bended knee every night and prayed for my family, for I love nothing more on this earth than my family, who are the whole of the blessings that Jah has given me. But I knew that the devil would be out there fighting to build up bitterness and malice and envy, for these are the Satan's tools, his nasty stacking trade. He used to peddle his wickedness door to door. During this time of whispering bitterness, I remained in the house that Nesta had bought me, locked away like she was in prison. One day, she got a letter in the mail from Louis Biles, the administrator of the estate, saying that because of some shenanigans involving the estate, her maintenance allowance of $3,000 per month would be cut off. Dun, dun, dun. I was now without any means of support. But when man close a door in my life, Jack opened my window. When man black a road in my path, Jack show a shot cut. In the mountain pass, if the mountain pass is sealed after me, Jack show me the road through the valley. Okay, Sadella, we get the point. <laughs> he made a way. If the river before me is spot, Jack reveal unto me the stretch out of the shallow waters where I must cross. Sadella went to church on that one. She wanted a, can I get an amen? Okay. Shortly after I received the news that my supportance was cut off, I got a call from the president of an African country. He was an exalted man in the world and one who loved Nestor's music. He invited me to visit his palace in Africa. At this president's expense, Diane Jobson and I went to Africa and were guests in his jeweled palace. We met his wife, whom everyone respectfully called Madame and his many children. We were entertained, what, well, Sadella Ghana, Africa, in a dining room so big that you could play football inside it and have plenty space left over for sidelines, road spectators, and gold posts. To get to the president, we had to go through about 50 different doors and pass what seemed like a hundred armed guards. How much time would they pan? 53 minutes. Then we sat down and ate food fit for a king or a president. Then the night before we were due to leave, a bearer entered our room carrying two brown ba paper bags, handed one to me and one to Diane, saying they were goodbye gifts from the president. So you not tell me we are which country? How much African country we have? A which president? Anywho, Diane contained 5,000, mine 30,000. U.S., I'm supposing, because she put USD. I was stunned. When we got back to the Miami, the custom official was just as stunned. For when he asked me if I had any money on me, I said yes. And how much? 30000 30000 Is that all? I think so. Where did you get the $30,000? A friend gave it to me. Why would somebody give you all this money? Because I am a mother. I have a mother too, but no one gives her that kind of money. You see, I told him sweetly, is not everyone is blessed alike. I just easy with him. Poor fella. Let me see which we are going to stop here now. Uh, the rigmarole, I haven't heard that word in a long time, <laughs> with the estate dragged on, even the house Nesta had bought me, the very roof over my head was in danger of being taken away. Biles came and walked through my house. Agents were sent to inspect it under the dirty law. Yo, the dirty Babylonian law. <laughs> the very roof over my head would be removed because the house had been in Nestor's name and was part of his estate. I'm not going to go all the way, all the way down in there, but that's a little bit of the aftermath from Sadella's account. I know I'm going to have to run a little bit to these commercial real quick. And then we're going to come back to 
Don Taylor's account. <laughs> That's, yo, Sadella always going to give me a joke, though. Let me run this commercial. Then we're going to come to Don Taylor, and I'm going to see you guys in the comment section. Stand by. And shout out to everyone who has supported the author. I like literacy, people. So I write books. I've read nonfiction, fiction books. This particular fiction book is called Island Twist, and it has a lot of twists and turns in it. It's a fun story, but it also has a lot of morals, a lot of dips, a lot of turns, a lot of conversation pieces. So definitely check it out on Amazon. And if you've already read it, please feel free to leave a review. Let me go ahead to commercial, and I'll be right back. Get a sip. Enjoy yourself. Drink a little water. We'll soon come back. Island Twist follows Jackie Brown, a young girl who finds herself head over heels for the new island boy at school in fresh outer yard, and Jackie has the fever. But as she navigates the ups and downs of her new crush, things quickly spiral out of control when her not-so-secret admirer becomes determined to sabotage her relationship. So check out the new novel, Island Twist, over on Amazon today. Now back to the story. All right, all right, all right. We're going to go for those who have just joined us again. One more time. One more time. I'm going to play the Dan Taylor because I know we're going to get in a Dan Taylor. It kind of, to me, when I read his account, it kind of gave me a, a framework to work from to say whether he was being genuine with what he is about to tell us, right? So with that, let me go ahead and run this clip of Don Taylor protecting Bob's image after Bob has passed away. And then we're going to go to what he said, all right? No, I'm not supposed to be in here. You were cool the camera. Who those people that are no, 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 I don't know why. I don't know why the guy, the guy who's quarreling, sweet me all. I don't know why. Like, like he's like, and yes, they call him Don Taylor. Do you know there's some people in your life that you call the whole name? Like, no matter how many call, and I think that's they call him his whole name. Everybody, Don Taylor. It's one name. Like, it's one name. <laughs> From what I see, <laughs> it's the way he chucked him, though. Why did he chuck him like that? Don is like, yo, I'm not having it, okay? I'm not having it. For those who couldn't hear between all of the, it was noise in the back. Don Taylor was in his feelings. He was like, bro, I already told y'all, don't run up in here like that. Y'all disrespecting the thing. And he was still protecting him even after he passed. So now we're coming from Don Taylor's book. All we could do is read what's left on record, listen to some accounts. And, you know, it is what it is from there. Make make your choice. Make your choice. Thank you for those who have just joined us. Big up, big up, big up yourself. All right. 
And this was the book. Remember, I started off with these two books. And then people were like, no, I'm going to. Some people were like, read Dante. And then, no, don't read Dante. I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a wicked. I'm a scammer. I'm a liar. I'm... You know, like he had a whole song to it. And I was like, well, why are they pushing back on Don Taylor? And I have to say, after reading Don Taylor's book, once you get past some of the misinformation in the retelling of the dates and the times like that in the beginning, the part that he was really sure about, because I don't, I don't think I showed this part, but in his book, he has reprinting of uh, contracts, agreements, letters. He has reprinting, even though, you know, somebody was scanning it in. But you've seen an effort to show uh, supporting evidence about what he was talking about. The work that he did with Bob, uh, bringing him to the audience that he did and manages him, his career. So I found that... You know, I guess he put it in there to build credibility to say, hey, listen, this is what I'm talking about and this is what it is. So I have to, I have to, he was citing some sources. He was citing some sources. No, we end in the topic. The only thing is we might have a bonus down the road as it, because I did say I was going to do the um, estate thing. But for right now, we're just at the aftermath, friends, family, and foes. And from right now, according to Rita, if y'all joined us late, Rita says she went to Bunny and Peter, and they was ripping down Bob's posters to because talking about they don't want no dead man, no BC dead man hanging up, and that Rita must come out of the way and make them take over the thing. Uh, according to Sadella, the Dutch of Babylonia. <laughs> so, I don't know why that's the dirty Babylonian law was trying to write her as the mother because if I never fish, she nobody wouldn't have no Bob. Okay, I don't know why that made me laugh. And now we're going to Don Taylor. This is coming from page 189, chapter 15. Right, we killed myself. <sighs> it was not a smooth road after Bob's death. As the different forces start to exert their own individual influences and make their individual demands. Okay. Everybody said the same thing. And somebody I saw in the comment section, let me see, let me shout out. It was said that he left confusion and I would have to agree. Confusion, 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 nothing but confusion, right? Nothing but confusion. It says, I approached Diane Jobson for advice as to what I should do about Bob's estate. And her advice was that the money for Bob's children should be turned over to the attorney general in Jamaica. Huh? So remember, this is the same Diane Jobson that be on the interviews. She was there. No one, no one who advised him to write this will that he didn't write. And now... Uh, it's things are in Don Taylor's hands, and Don Taylor's like, Thank you, Yvonne. Shout out to Yvonne, she's from Cayman Islands. Yvonne, shout out to Yvonne, support the channel and ting. Thank you for your ten dollar super chat donation. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, let's see here. It says here, This advice, however, was in direct conflict with the argument from Rita Marley that if I resign and just turn over everything to the administrator, the children would never get the money because of the government's bureaucracy. Why would she throw, turn it over to the government? I thought about it and knew that I wanted the children to get the money because um, in other places, Don Taylor often says that Bob said, you know, that he's doing this for his children. This is what he would tell Don Taylor, right? It says here, so I said, okay, leave it with me and let me think about it. All the different factors and persons that would be entitled. I was, of course, referring to such persons as Rita Marley, Mrs. Booker, Diane Jobson, and the children. It says here, I had decided that after the funeral services and Bob's burial, I would sit and deal with each person individually after obtaining their viewpoint. Why would Diane Jobson advise let's that she um that he put it in uh, anyway she will have to tell us why she did such a thing it says in the meantime 
I continue, where am I? In the meantime, I continue to set up things for the services as there was a new government, the JLP, Eddie Siaga, having given Michael Manley a resounding beating in the 1980s polls. I spoke with Babsy Grange, who was a minister of the state. So this is the second time we heard the name mentioned. Rita says she received assistance. Now Don Taylor is saying he spoke with Babsy Grange as well, who was, the minister, who was a minister of state in the prime minister's office and about the government's offer to have a state funeral. The family agreed to this. Rita then came to me and said she had to have access to some money over that period of time. And as there was approximately 400,000 US in the Island Record account in New York, I released that to her. So according to Don Taylor, for the funeral preparations, he gives Rita 400,000 US. I released that to her. But on top of that, she asked me to release another 1 million US to her. I agreed to this and sent a fax <clears throat> to our lawyer in Tortola stating that I wanted to transfer this sum to Rita and requested legal advice as to how to proceed. And you have to read the part about the whole Tortola situation because the money situation, mm, a lot of stuff was going on. So he's saying now he's going to release another milli. So now this is 1.4. Rita not having any financial experience or any contacts asked me to help her set up an account. So I flew with her to Nassau, where we went to Bank of Nova Scotia, main branch on Bay Street to meet with a Mr. Roy Curry. Again, what I can appreciate is he's giving us location, bank name, wish party day, who you chat to. Somebody have to say, I lie. And they're going to have to prove it because uh, a lot of information here. Whom I always dealt with. I myself also had an account there. Mr. Curry proceeded to make all the necessary arrangements and the money was transferred to Rita from the Barclays Blank in Tortola. So she had her first million dollars of Bob's money. Remember, again, they must say, Bob, Rita said she never know nothing. Shout out to Mary C. Mary C, shout out to you, Mary C. Thank you for supporting the live stream. We're 30, how much episode we gone? Enough episode. I'm more book off a bite. <laughs> So thank you for supporting. Thank you for supporting. Where are we here? So Rita immediately began flying family and friends from all over the world for the funeral. It was about a week later that we had the first of funeral services in Miami at Bob's mother's house. And about four or five days after that, the official state funeral was held in Jamaica. Our arrival in Jamaica for the official funeral was fraught with tension and excitement. We saw, and that's why I showed that video a number of times. It was tension. It was excitement. It was crazy. Okay. So it says here, to begin with, it had only been six months since Jamaica had witnessed the bloodiest election to date with about 800 political killings taking place in six month period leading up to the 1980s election. I guess one could say that the peace concert had not worked. And remember, there was two. One was Smile Jamaica 76. The next peace concert when he held Manly and uh, uh, Siaga's hand in 78. And like he says, after that point in 79, and if you look at the old Gleena articles, it was, it was, it was wild. I guess one could say, yeah, that the peace concert didn't work. Manly and his democratic socialism had suffered a resounding defeat. The usual arguments developed concerning the method of administering the official funeral, which in reality was being officially officiated over by the very Babylon with whom Bob had never been in tune, but who now saw it fit to award him the order of merit, the highest award that could offer. They could offer, sorry. And then he cites, hypocrite and parasite will come up and take a bite. And if night shall turn today, a lot of people will run away. Who the cap fit? Who the cap fits? Let them wear it. But show me can. Sorry, guys. Musical break. Me never can no foul. All right. It says, 
The Economical Survey saw the participation of church and state and joint participation of 12 tribe and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. I guess in a way Bob had indeed brought them together, if only for a day. Needless to say, the whole country turned out to show respect for Bob, lining the roads for a full 60 miles as the procession wound itself to nine miles in St. Anne where Bob was to be buried. It was the rousing reception that Michael Manley got at the funeral service that created some problems for me with the new government. Remember, okay, they thought when he was doing the concert in 66, the whole situation that he was teaming up with certain people. So Manley, I actually saw the video where Manley is walking in with um, his wife. Beverly at the time, right? But I didn't, I don't know if he spoke, but I did see Siaga speak. So again, it's a highly electric environment. As some persons in the political quarters, perhaps Rita herself, who was becoming very close to Babsy, Babsy Grange and Eddie Siaga. Did he throw Rita under the bus? <laughs> did he just do that? <laughs> Suggesting that I had something to do with it. Maybe my dislike for some, not me, him, Maybe his dislike for some of the JLP politicians was obvious. After the state funeral in Jamaica, he went back to Miami to await the return of Rita so that he could discuss the terms of the transfer of Bob's assets to her. And there is a, um, again, there's a picture. We shot that picture today. It's on the community board. I'm wondering if that was the conversation because the, uh, the way he's looking in that picture is like, Rita, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? OK, what are we going to do? He's looking at her very concerned. It says here. I wish I would. During this period, I continued to have conversations with Mrs. Booker, who was concerned about being left out of any decision regarding Bob's assets because she did not trust Rita. Listen, what did what <laughs> what did Sadella just say? Oh, people was coming back to me and and sussing and telling me um, that Rita, and she's just like, get out of here. I don't want to hear that. Same time, nobody's talking to her, but Don Taylor is over saying that he was talking to her. So how is this? Back to Sadella, the news carriers went to work on what little family feeling was left. They spread lies and rumors about me to build strife and stir up bad feelings. People would come to my doorstep spreading gossip about Rita, saying what she was doing with Nesta's money. I would tell them, listen, get out of my yard. Don't come here and talk about Rita like that. Okay, who's telling the truth here? Because Don Taylor is saying, and Don Taylor was book was wrote first, by the way. This book was written before Sadella's book. So in Don Taylor's book, it's saying that he would call her because um, she felt left out of any decision regarding Bob's assets because she did not trust Rita. I recall her telling me that she needed about $3,000 a month to live, which I got Rita to agree to give, taking care of this immediate problem. So here she says that the estate gave her the 3000 So that would have meant that after that first meeting, she was talking to Don Taylor. And then Don Taylor is relaying this to Rita, according to Don Taylor, and they agree and they gave her the money. It says, which I got Rita to agree to give, taking care of this immediate problem. Actually, Miss Booker had hinted that she, we're not ready for this, we're not thinking we're ready for this. That part, yeah, let me sit up for that part, yeah. Well, on there. <laughs> Why? It say, actually, Mrs. Booker, Mada Booker, had hinted that she would have preferred to have Sydney Breakspear as the head of the estate instead of Rita. Eh? 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 How? Don, what are you saying? Why would she? Eh? Remember, Sydney was up in the house <laughs> when Bob had came, cocked up in the back room when Rita came and 
Bob came out and went and chilled with the children. So Rita is, go I mean, Sydney is going back and forth between two opinions, according to the narrative. And you would rather have Sydney, who's not married or beholden to anybody. Rita put more vested interest in the estate, meaning the building up of this legacy, as we even see today, than did Sydney Breakspeare. Cindy often says, I don't know why I keep calling her Cindy. Cindy, uh, Cindy Genium. Yes, that it was her Miss World that helped catapult him. But if there was no music, if there was no, if there was no whalers, if there was no practice, if there was no Cox and Dodd, if there wasn't all of these people, he wouldn't, there wouldn't be anything if there weren't any island records. So the fact that he said this, huh? Or if she said this allegedly. Anyway, it says here, her comments about Rita were always the same. So she black is so our heart black. Where did he get that comment from? So she black is so our heart black. Don, I hope she didn't say that. She had said this several times on and off, especially when she was upset. Good thing we're going over colorism in the Caribbean. Good thing we're going over colorism in the Caribbean. Okay. If this was ever a commercial, so she black is so our hot black. She had said this several times on and off, especially when she was upset. However, Cindy was definitely not an option because my lawyer had advised me that whereas I could put the estate in Rita's name because she was legally Miss Marley, even though we knew the real nature of the relationship, I could not put it in anyone else's name. Rita intimated that she did not want to bring the entire estate into Jamaica because of the strong currency restrictions at the time. I told her that if she opened accounts in the Bahamas in each of the children's names, a point there mothers as trustees and then transfer their fair share into the account that would satisfy me i was still always i was still as always trying to ensure that the money and the estate would remain with the children rita said that was fine with her so according to don he's given her the suggestion that she needs to put this in the children's names and i'm supposing it's all the children i don't know but she's saying that's sufficient with, we both then went back to Nassau. This was about two months after Bob's death. This is a lot. I mean, usually people have time to grieve. Like, this is a lot. People say marriage is not that important. It's just a certificate. If she, if she was the bedside wife, she couldn't do this. If she was the bedside wife, me and you there in the circle, she couldn't do this. So make people tell you what they want to tell you. <laughs> okay. Anywho. If this is ever a lesson, this was about two months after Bob's death. So we're at what? May, June, July. We're in July. I took her to my Bahamian attorney, Mrs. Ruby Nottage, whose firm was known as Nottage and Miller then. I went over my proposal to the lawyers and Miss Nottage helped advise Rita. We then went to the bank and opened accounts in all the children's name. We opened them with about $10,000 per child, and Rita was supposed to transfer the rest of the money after I had resigned and nominated her as president. It was also agreed that Rita would take the books to Ruby Nottage, which I believe she did. I then started a six-month trek of introducing Rita to all the people involved in Bob's affairs and putting everything in her hands. We made several trips around the world in the process of doing this. I could go on, but that would go into the estate stuff. We might have to, that might have to be a bonus because it gets in there. I just wanted to do the aftermath, the friends, the family, and the foes, because not two months later, all of this is happening. Really, this was what was on everybody's mind in the six months that Bob was suffering. He's not making a will because Sadella mentions it more than one time. He's not making a will. Nobody knows what's going on. So this was on their mind for like the last eight months. Okay. And now that he's dead, not even in his in two months gone, all of this is happening. All right. 
The fact that Don said that Sadella allegedly wanted to put Cindy in. Hmm? <laughs> Leah said two more episodes, maybe. Yeah, we might take a break. We're going to go through some stuff because, they, like I said, there is a part that it I think it has value, which is this estate conversation. So we can, we can, if we want to see pop up, don't shock. We said that last one would have never been heard of until the test. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of money talk, but because what happened is when you read Don Taylor's account, when they start setting up all of these companies, when Bob is having trouble with the publishing and he's putting music in different people's names and he's setting up all, all these variations of Tough Gong and he has accounts in Tortola and that's where a lot of the money is going. Rita doesn't know any about anything about this. Don Taylor's name is on the account. So now that he is on the account, He's the executor of the estate until he gets Rita set up because she's not set up for him to transfer it over to. So he feels like this is his last effort. This is his last push as the manager to make sure that he transfers the stuff over in a way that he's supposed to. But something happens later on and that's how they end up in court, right? I didn't realize that until I read the fullness of his book. So it may be something that, to, that that we could go over at a later date. Yeah, they do favor. Miss Booker and Rita favor, but sometimes, and that goes back to the colorism. Did she see, even though Norval was old, and even though he was many things, did she see him as a level up, right? Did she see herself as she saw Rita? Sometimes we speak to others as we feel about ourselves, a lot of times, which is the, it's coming from self-hatred. So if she's black and she feels indifferent about her hue, her melanation, then she's projecting that onto Rita. Because how can one second you be like, oh, Rita, according to you, Rita said she would give you half. And then in the next phase, somebody's saying, oh, you don't trust her. You know, I'm going to come through the comments now. <clears throat> the old Jen Camille says that this is said in Trinidad as well, especially from the old generation. There was a lot of colorism going on, and hopefully we can get some answers on that topic as well. Yeah, Mother Booker was wiling. She was wiling. <laughs> T. Shakari said, Don is doing way too much. What do you think? In what part? Yeah, Jamaica is definitely an interesting place. It's some connection about, again, it's not just the skin color, I think it's the the skin color that is attached to some social economic status, right? If it's attached to some something of value, and because you're living in a place where those who have access to resources come in a certain complexion, then people tend to curse their own complexion because of it not being associated with being having access to resources, right? This is all about resources. Make no mistake about it. It's about perception and about resources. I, I spoke before about going to Africa and it's just curious when you're no longer in a place where it's the color that is the, this, the, the order of distinction, the separation. It's not the color because you look out into the landscape and everybody is melanated. Right. And so it's no longer the color that it is. Maybe it's the tribe. Maybe it's maybe it's the education. Maybe it's the location. And now it becomes other things that distinguish you from the other person. Right. And so in Jamaica, because and many places here as well, because of the access to resources and, and the colonizer colonized situation, you know, that's where now your color becomes something that people will feel like even when you watch some of the bleachers documentaries, which I've watched, right? And because I like to understand why are you doing something? When you listen to the reasoning, then you will see what the person is saying without really saying it, right? Uh, Cindy wanted to be married to Bob so that she can milk his legacy. Uh oh. I don't, ah, yeah, what's going on? Uh oh. Let me see what else is going on here. Marriage certificate has value if we don't learn nothing else from this conversation. For those who were saying, for Bob, me not really marry Rita Marley, Rita Marley, name Rita Marley, because she's singing at the band. That's not what Don Taylor just said. 
Rita Nolly named me to Marley because you and her are on this marriage certificate, brother. It's legal. Dirty Babylon system. Dirty Babylon law. <laughs> yeah, did okay. Question Did you think I'm gonna give you the link? Did you think and we're gonna what time is it? Do you think or what would you say of of Sadella's entitlement to Bob's earnings, right? Would she have been so favorable if Norval was the if Nor because remember Bob has a, a uncle named Robert Marley, right? And oddly enough, when his uncle died in Jamaica, it was also a big deal, right? What if Bob's not Bob Norval's mother? Would let's say that it was Norval who had the resources? Would Sadella have been as open to Norval's mother? wanting resources. You understand what I'm saying? Because the way she came in was like an entitlement kind of way, like forget them kids and that lady over there. But for the sake of time, I'm going to, I see artists is in backstage. So welcome to the conversation. It's a lot. It's a lot. Let me a think lot. I don't even know where to start. Where I mean, I feel like, I feel like Rita, when she writes the book, Rita, she just like vast over everything and just give you a point. Don't even know where to start or how to tell the deep seated of it. Right. First of all, I just like to say once again, thank you so much. You got me sitting here up in the dark. Well, I'll turn the light on just listening to this and laughing. But right. Rita, giving her credit, knowing what we know now, mm -hmm. I'm giving her so much credit for not hogging and not and seeing what she did and mm -hmm. how she made Bob dreams come true about leaving his name as a legacy. His music is still a legacy. The family, the way she has uh, carved that out, mm -hmm. I give her 100% credit for that. She held so many things in through right. the marriage that she's not saying it, but you could feel it at the end. You can, you can, you can see everything when, you know, I was like, how is it that she didn't know that these things were going on with Bob and these people didn't like like him and it's like mm. she wasn't really there they really didn't let her in mm. but the power of wife gladly she never did any kind of the divorce or tossing the ring in the ocean or whatever they were doing that didn't come to fruition to make right. anything so she still held on and to god be the glory these people right now this family right now that sported on this legacy that is all on her mm. seriously and with Don, kudos to him. I think he made up for what he did. He did his bad where he, whatever he did, stole the money, whatever. But I think he came through in covering for Bob and trying to make sure at least his family is protected. They mm. got what they're supposed to get. He, the man worked hard. Granted, again, Bob did his music. He was kind from his heart, but he really didn't know business. If he did know business, these people wouldn't have been going through this. He would have had things set up. Mm. It could have been his religion. I mean, knowing business and doing business are two different things. True. It's like he was singing, making money, and just like, here, I'm going to come line up at my fence. Here's some money. And he didn't put things in order for his right. family. Right. That's why his mother went off the way she did, because she didn't know where she stand. As a person who worked for a probate attorney, S it the fan when you don't know where your next meal is coming from or how things are going to happen when the, the provider is not there. You start to claw everybody down like crab in a barrel mm. until you know what you know. And there's so much to be said, but I'm just going to leave it here. But, you know, kudos to you and what you're doing, and I just love it. There's so much, so much to say, but I'm giving other people airtime, you know? Thank you so much, artists. Thank you for your thoughts, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the conversation. I put the link in the box. We're going to run through because I know it's a lot, y'all. I know it's a lot. We're not done the book club, everybody. We just wrapping up the Marley and Rita series. All right, Nesta, we're giving them a little break and things. So definitely continue to tune in. All right, Leo, you're welcome to the conversation. You're up next. Is Leah on the mic? All right. While we wait for Leah, we see Kadana. Oh, wait, there goes Leah. Welcome to the conversation. Hi, Mona. It's been a pleasure, mind you. I enjoyed every bit of this. It really speaks to the culture of 
Jamaican mothers. Mm. Best believe when you speak of the uh, the language of city, I see Fati. You know, and when Jamaican mothers have their children, they expect their children to provide for them mm. in their elder years. Best believe I had to take care of my mother. Right. So I really feel that that's just that mindset of that generation. I had you, you take care of me now because I took care of you. So that's why I feel Sidella behaved the way she did. She too enough, you know, but that's why well, I think what, she what, behaved what you, the way she did. Son, if that be the case and her son knew, then why didn't he, why didn't he make sure that she would be okay? I mean, I know. We I, can't, don't know. Yeah, I don't part. know. I don't know. I I think that Bob, in a way, felt somewhat abandoned. You I know? think so. Too. I think so too. You know, and I really feel that he had some animosity with his mother. I think so too. In a way, I he hurt. loved his mother. I believe he really, really loved her. But you know, he worked hard. And he felt like you left me. You left me at like what, fifteen or sixteen years old? Well, five. Well, she first it was five when he got uh, curiously. He went to Miss Gray. Yeah. Then, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> so, but the heartbreaking part is, and uh, is that I was listening to someone ask me, Amuna, what's another book? I was listening to so much things to say by Roger Steffens. And was it? No, no, it wasn't that one. It was the other book, Catch a Fire. And it's the mm -hmm. way in which he uh, he paints it that Bob is like crying out, like, Mama, why are you leaving me? You know what I mean? And the way it was, right. I'm like, when you think about the possible trauma of the five-year-old and then don't see anybody for a year or so until she find she finally makes his way back. So I think he does have some abandonment issues. And listen, and I feel it because it feels like my sister's story. My mother left my oldest sister in Jamaica while she came to the United States to make mm -hmm. a life. The Civil mm -hmm. War was going on at the time, mm -hmm. and she came to the U.S. I was born afar, and I was born here. My okay. sister was born in Jamaica, and my sister still holds that. being left yep. to this day. And she's 57 now, and she still holds it against wow. mommy. She do. So I believe culturally, I, I'm seeing the culture. This narrative of Bob Marley shows the culture. It was very important that you did this. This was a good thing. Thank you. This was a good thing. We got, it. we got through it. Yes, I appreciate it. We got through it. It was a lot, but we got through it. it so thank you. So Leah, we have some I'm gonna people. let I'm gonna let somebody else come up. Thank you, Amuna. Have thank a good you night. Know. You did the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I say it correctly. Kadada, welcome to the conversation. Mama, you on mute? Hold on. Go ahead now. Okay. Bless up. I just have to say I have been enjoying this program you are an excellent orator thank you, thank your you. passion for reading definitely comes through you're a great storyteller thank you. that's what's got everybody so hooked the words on the page are excellent but to be able to communicate it over is just you know it comes from the heart and i've learned a lot on this program i have definitely been a fan of bob marty for a very 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 long time since i was a very small child not mm -hmm. just like exposed to it and you know, learn to love it later. Loved him from a very young age. So this brings a richness to that relationship. I think a lot of people, even if they love Bob Marley, they have a relationship. They feel like they have a relationship with Bob Marley and being able to go into so much of this information in this way and be jovial about it too. It resonates in a very familiar, it makes you feel like, oh yeah, I really do have this relationship. We're laughing and we're learning and we're doing all that. And all of that makes me feel that relationship is real. So it's really brought forward something good in the heart in this relationship with his music and his life. So thank you for that first off. Thank you. Firstly, what I was said in the comments and what I want to be very uh, champion quite a bit is that Rita was smart. 
I think a lot of people do not give Rita enough credit for how smart she was. I know I would not have gone through all of that I would have gone through in that relationship, making the music, touring the world, to then divorce someone and get nothing. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is not even on the table. She said and chess, I, checkers. Really just like, I'm playing chess, not checkers. Checker. Right? She's not playing checkers at all. You know? You know, she was the re legal, rightful person. Even if she wasn't formally educated on anything, mm -hmm. there's no way that you don't know. Even if you don't know the ex sp specifics of how much money he may have coming in, you, you know, like they, they did in the movie where she is like observing everyone in the background. I think that was really keen in the movie, how she's at the beginning, she's at the 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 teleconf the t the conference that they're having with the right. media and she's like observing everyone and she's at this that and the third and she's always observing what's going on and you know um you know if, even when she's like you know don taylor you know making deals in the dark she's watching mm -hmm. a lot of things whether or not she has the power to do anything about it in the meantime but enough enough education would have you know that as the wife things are going to fall into your lap and you're going to have to disseminate it accordingly. Even if she didn't know, I think it was, he had, uh, I, I heard, well, I don't know if it was in this program or another program that he had upwards to 40 some odd million dollars um, and then had to disseminate it amongst the children, et cetera. But um, I think a lot of people get mad at Rita because I think she, she might've outsmarted people too. A lot of the people who are bad mouthing her, a lot of the men that were in that circle, Etc. What's the what's the brother's name? Uh, Cole. It's Alan Skill Cole. Yeah. Still Cole. Like he went <laughs> off on YouTube. He's going still mad off. Today. He looks still mad. He looks mad at Rita. <laughs> mad at Rita. He does. He does. Particularly when like when you just when you uncovered in the book or you are you highlighted in the book that um you know he was managing quite a bit after Don left. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to separate Rita from Bob and put her in the other hotel and did all of those other things. Yeah, that was weird. And everybody said it, uh, that once Don stepped off the scene, for whatever the reasoning is, things go left, right? So there's a lot of witnesses to that, that something is not on the up and up, even with the longtime friends. This is why it's interesting. I didn't even read about Skill Cole being in Germany as well. Right. So you get to see who's your friends when you're well and you get to see who's your friends when you're sick. And that's kind of what Bob was able to see when he wasn't the let me give you this. Let me give you that person. Right. He wasn't on his feet giving away. And then he was but he didn't have the power to really do anything. Right. Because at this point, he's too sickly. So it's definitely a lesson. A lot of lessons in this story. A lot of lessons. Yeah. And I remember in one documentary, uh, one of his. Um, one of his members of the band, I think he said that he felt like Bob didn't leave. He didn't leave a will on purpose. So he could, even in the afterlife, he could see who's who and what's what and what people's real motives were. I, I read that. I just didn't quote it because I can't remember where I read it. But right. Something to that effect. Yeah. I, did read I think that's interesting. I just think that the, the poor part of that is how much the children suffer. Yep. In, in the aftermath of all that, you know, cause you know, adults have to take heed of things that everyone's grieving. And then like you said earlier, like to manage all this and not even have pause to grieve accordingly. Right. right. Two months later and you on the, you, you over here battling and duking it out. That's a bit much. That's yeah. Bit much. So just to sign out, I just want to say thank you. I just purchased your book, uh, Pumpkin. Hey, Pumpkin. Uh, Book. Yeah, yes. Hey Pumpkin. I just purchased your book, Hey Pumpkin, as a thank you for putting on this program. And I want to encourage everybody to do the same, you know, as a thank you for, for doing such a great job. You know, I think the book was like $20 or what have you. Please be sure to support it, Mooney, because you did, do you went in, got documents, you did, you did, the, you did the thing. I love this program. You hear me? I loved it. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Blessings. Thank you so much. We have Dr. Charles coming up next. Dr. Charles, welcome to the conversation. Uh-oh, 
What happened to Dr. Charles? Dr. Charles, come back in. We have AMSA. Welcome to the conversation. And Tate, you're going to have to go out and come back in, um, please, because it says device not connected. So we have someone else who's coming up, but you have to just go out and come back in. Go ahead. Uh oh. I'm sorry. Your, okay, go ahead. Your mic was on. Okay, peace. There you go. Greetings. Greetings. Welcome to the conversation. Yes. Thank you so much for again holding the space for us this evening. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I wanted to reflect a bit on Sadella. I have a bit of compassion for her. I could only imagine her coming up in her home, in her in that that space that's extremely racialized, as you said before, the, the colorism that's entrenched in the culture. Mm -hmm. Her internalizing it, you know, that is definitely something that's entrenched in the culture. And um, I have compassion for her because unfortunately, so many black women internalize that, you know, across the diaspora and okay. they understand it. Like, I, I don't even think they, they can even they struggle to humanize themselves, unfortunately. And so then it's going to be difficult for them to humanize their reflection in other women like Rita. But, you know, Rita is, I have a very, very soft spot for Rita. She's July born. I'm July born. And I know how us type of women are who are born in July, very, very gentle in spirit. And people oftentimes do underestimate her. And I've seen that, but she's not unintelligent. She's just modest, you know? Right. I see that gentleness when I, when I, when I, and I don't mean to cut you, when I watch her interviews, I said, I said, you, you, I could see how you can get pulled into her because she's very, like you said, she's not, she's not, she's smart, but she's not aggressive with it. You understand what I'm saying? And it's a kind of smooth, calming kind of energy to her. And so, you know, people could take that for weakness as well, you know, and which yeah. we see they did. We, we see they that. They did, but you know, as they say, first is last and last shall be first. Look at that. It's <laughs> a testament to that. And that's all I think about. I'm like Alpha and Omega. That's it for her. That's what they did. Bob, though, like, you know, I delve in astrology a little bit. I have to be very honest about that. And a lot of people have been doing his chart, and it's been consistent that he has a moon in Scorpio. And the moon in Scorpio is debilitated. It's in not a very good condition, which speaks to the mother. And usually that, well, that actually does indicate a very bad relationship with the mother. So that was already mapped out in the stars that that's the conditions under which he will have to live his life. To have not so much of a harmonious relationship with the mom, but that's a lesson for him to learn too, to learn you know, unfortunately, they say your astrology is your karma. And maybe he needed to learn the lessons of not having such a a sweet, strong, and nurturing maternal energy in his mother. But he found it in his wife. Who knows if he really appreciated it, though? Well, it doesn't look like, I mean, based on what we were able to see, it doesn't look like if that was part of his lesson on his soul journey. You know, I'm, I don't go so far into the astrology in that respect. Um However, we can observe that he, there are some lessons, and I'm glad you brought that up, that there are some lessons that we come here to learn, all of us. Everybody's test is not the same. And when we see something and we'll say, well, I would react different, maybe because it's that's not our portion. You understand what I'm saying? So right. even when he got that nurturer, it doesn't look like he was prepared to, to, to deal with her in the way in which he should have. He kind of made it worse a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, listen, you got the mother you deserved also because the representation of the epitome of mother, and we know Rita is the epitome of yeah, mother. She's mothering, yeah. Everybody's children. Yeah. Back that. I love Bob. Bob is the godfather. He is the prophet, but <laughs> also flawed. And we have to. Everybody. I, th I think one thing about his mother, too, I think the conflict that we see that he went through in his life is also in the story. That's why I'm so grateful for Sadella for telling that story. Because in that pull between Norval, who wants to mash up the church, and Sadella, who's trying to go towards the church, and that that tug of war, that's him. You mm. know what I mean? That, that's literally the manifestation. He's singing this, but he's doing this, right? 
that his, he is his equally his mother and his father. And that was his journey. That, that, that was his journey. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Fitz, uh, have an amazing night and we appreciate you again. Thank you so much, Ansa. So we have, we, what time is it now? 10.30. We have Dr. Charles Tate. I'm not, okay, finally, I think I, her thing came up. Dr. Charles, welcome to the conversation. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there she goes. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. I said so much things to say right yeah, now. So <laughs> much things to say. Hey. <laughs> wow. Man, good evening. Oh good my evening. goodness. Good evening. Thank you so much for um for this um this lesson actually, you know? This was really a lot. But a couple of things so I can be brief because I see someone is is waiting. Mm -hmm. Um being married to a Jamaican first son for over 30 years, I have, yeah, I have realized that Jamaican's mother have a sense of entitlement. And it is, I had to learn this the hard way. Um, I am first generation, but I had no idea that the son is, is expected to take care of his mother. Mm -hmm. It is an expectation. Um, and it, 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 um, I believe that city, you know, was within her way of thinking in her right that she, she was entitled to have what Bob had. Um, maybe even before Rita, like she said, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here. So, you know, right. So, um, that didn't surprise me. What surprised me, though, was that she was so bad-minded. Mm. She was a double, I put in the chat, double-sided machete. She's mm. smiling in Rita's face and right me, and cutting her behind her back. That was just so ugly. That was terrible. Mm. And, um, and I know it must have been very painful for Rita to, to go through. That was just something that she didn't she also illustrated that in her willingness somebody said before that she was very cozy with the extramarital affairs so she kind of illustrated that in her willingness to chat up to the women then that he the girlfriends of bob right meantime she would still chat up to rita and also you know host them at her house and let them stay in there she she kind of showed that along the way uh and i'm sure rita could have felt a kind of way about that as well. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? I'm sure she did. And yeah, I yeah. must say that I believe that the reason why she was so cozy with those other women is because Bob was supporting her. And she is not going to go against her son. There you go. She's That's going part. to, you know, she knows where her bread is butter and she's not gonna make any fuss about it. Yes, I bread butter to That's side. Right, right. <laughs> I'm red, but that's oh what they God. say when they say, for those who don't know, they're like, if you don't have no problems, there's nothing wrong with you, then say your bread butter to yeah. side. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> so she was not going to mess that up, you know? So, right, right, right. That's you know, unfortunately, point. Rita suffered because of that. But no, she. there's no way that City was going to go against anything. Like she said in her book, Bob came first. You know, even before her husband, I remember her saying something if Bob wanted something you know she rushed to do it before she even did it for her own spouse so so do you think i mean in in her, in the way she touts bob even if she has, she has two other sons is it is it more because he's the son of norval the european uh englishman that gives him this prestige <laughs> Not, I mean, that, I don't know. I, yeah, We're no. colorism, but that's i'm feeling like point. that's a good point because my my husband the darkest um, and look, he told me himself, everything that happened in the house is always him because he's the black one, you know? Wow. Um, and, um, yeah, I did see colorism where his mother did favor her lighter children. Um, so yeah, it could be that, or it could be that he was the most, he had the most money, you know? But she was kind of behaving this way a little bit before you know, before mm -hmm. the money a little bit. It was kind of like, you know, oh, Miss Triet, no son. 
Oh, my brown picnic. Right, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they left remember? the brown picnic. Them. Yeah. Remember, um, Rita even said, I guess she was left behind because she was the dark one. And right. And she thought she was left behind because she was black. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's a sad thing. And and her auntie kind of brings her in and fosters her like a, 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 a self-esteem, right? By letting her yeah. know, like, don't worry about that. You know what I mean? Okay. We got you. So we got to shout out to auntie in this story too, because if there wasn't an auntie in this story, the story could have really went left. You know what I mean? The okay. fact that her aunt, the strong woman and her was there to show her industry and entrepreneurship and things like that. Yeah. I think it kind of helped her get through her mother leaving and eventually her father leaving as well. Yeah. So auntie, auntie really did a lot of the heavy lifting in yes. this story as well. She did. She did. Yeah, she, she she really tried with Rita to help her to see herself. You know. Right. Yeah, she tried. Another thing about Bob um, not having a will. Bob, Bob, to me, I I believe he was very angry that he was dying. I think so. I don't. He think fought he it. Right. Yeah, he tried right. all kinds of different doctors and medicine. He didn't want to go, and I believe that not making a will was part of his anger. Mm. Right. And so, you know, I mean, we can look at that. Just kind of go. There was a it. comment and I just can't remember where I see it. It was kind of like he was like, make them fight themselves over it. Make, make, make them kill themselves. Make, make them kill themselves over it. There was a comment. I just don't remember where I read it. And I was like, okay, Bob. He did say I, that. And then he said something about who who wanted it, you know, something like that. He said. Yeah. Remember so that, that comment? That, yeah. That, yeah. So yeah, definitely so he, there was some anger there. Right. So that yeah. just just his way, you know, of um, I don't know if he was. Yeah, he was angry. He was angry and just, you know, why should I leave? You know, why do I have to go and leave everything for everybody? I'm you know, I'm not going to even make it easy for them, you know. Right. But at the same time, it, your your children, the ones that you created, the ones that's here, the ones that now, because I, I even said when I was discussing off camera that on the other side of that is his children are orphaned. They're mm -hmm. fatherless. They're orphaned. You understand what I'm saying? So, But, but sis, weren't they orphaned when he was alive? They kind of were emotionally uh, to a certain degree. Sometimes, so to a certain degree, yes, but now they're like, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like, why yeah. wouldn't you want to make sure that at least, if anything, they were okay? Right, right. But when I, I, you know, I can't judge, but I guess, you know, it dying and being angry and not wanting to leave, you know, just right. uh, that wasn't foremost in his mind, you know, right. to take care of somebody else. That, uh, that's what I believe. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so oh, much. It's my pleasure and keep it up this is wonderful i can't wait for the next one <laughs> yeah we're gonna keep going guys yeah. but also just join us welcome to the conversation we are winding down i want to shout out to ruth adams for the 20 dollars super chat donation you don't know it's gonna go towards buying books i'm looking to get amy number <laughs> amy's book over here i'm over here searching everywhere for this book because it's it's not in the usual places, but nonetheless, we're going to get it. So with that said, thank you so much, Dr. Charles. We have to be waiting. It's always good to hear you. Thank you. We have Tate who has been waiting. Welcome to the conversation. Is Tate having some technical difficulties? to Tate. We have Andrea on the line. Welcome to the conversation. Hi, Imuna. Thank you. And um, I just really wanted to hop on to tell you thank you. As everybody has been saying, thank you for creating this safe space for us to talk about this topic. Um, you asked the question some time ago about why do you think that we're also invested in this? Mm -hmm. And I think we're invested because we can see part of our history, every as Caribbean people, mm -hmm. part of our history and some part of Bob's story, whether it is being left by a mother who's gone abroad to seek better, coming from country to town, some part of the story, mm -hmm. we can see ourselves in it. So I think that's why we are gravitating to this and in this what I call safe space um, to discuss the topic. Yes, of course, like everybody else has said, I'm a Rita fan, no. 
<laughs> more than I was before because not only um, is she strong and smart, but she kind of had some foresight. She could see in the distance. She could see that it would be better, you know, to put the children to be together for, she had some kind of foresight. I, I don't know what it was. Um, and even through your reading, I have a, a better appreciation for Miss Brixby as well. I, I can have a sim kind of sympathy for her because she was young when, she was when young. this first started. And growing up the pretty girl, she always, she was a bit entitled. She thought mm. that this should be my life and I should have this. And so, so, so because of her upbringing as well, you could kind of sympathize with her for how she feels. Um, so many points I want to make, but maybe the last one I'll say is that Bob has a song where he says, um, tell Ziggy I'm fine and keep Sidella in line. And then he says, tell auntie I'm fine and keep daughter in line. Of course, he didn't put Rita's name in the song, but we know he's referring to Rita. And I think oh, he Rita. did. Yeah. He's, he he did. <laughs> you don't, you know the song? I'm also going to go look the song right now. Yeah, I'm going to send listening. it to you. <laughs> and it tells Ziggy I'm fine, keep Sidella in line. You know, Sidella, the, the little, the, the daughter Sidella, she's just so feisty. And tell mm -hmm. auntie I'm fine and keep daughter in line. I think he, um, and I, I think he did it when he was in England. So all I'm saying is that he had Rita in mind even then. He was thinking of her. I, I think he understood their connection. Even if, you know, they couldn't be together right. as husband and wife all the time. He understood that this was his person. And that's what I think. Keep so I am. Moving. The Keep mm -hmm. On Moving is the name of the song. Yeah, probably. Okay. And um, he, and, and oh, and the other thing too, I found his whole family back, um, the, the British part of his family. I found it somewhere on some website. I'll try and send it to you. It went okay. back about 10 generations about of, of, of how he came to be from somewhere okay. in the UK. Anyway, again, thank you very, very thank much for this. So much. And God bless you and every thank blessing you. to you. Blessings. Thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. For those who just joined us, welcome to the conversation. My email, I'll put the email in the box. For those who just joined us, welcome to the conversation. We're coming to the two hour mark, but no worries. I said this was the, we're wrapping up the Bob and Rita series, but we're not wrapping up reading. You don't know. We're going to keep reading. We're going to keep pushing, keep learning. I want to thank everybody for your thoughts, your comments. I'm humbled, right? As you, as you guys have said, I love reading. I've loved reading since I was a little girl. My mother used to buy me a book. We said, mommy, maybe you should open up my scholastic. You remember Scholastic in America? You, and you pick out my book then. I ain't want no toy. I want a book. <laughs> because reading just allows you to expand your mind and travel to so many different places. And so I'm glad that you are here to share with me this love and this joy and that we could continue to learn and grow on this journey. I'm not sure what happened to Tate's line, but um, definitely. So I want to thank you for tuning in. This was the Aftermath Friends, Families, and Foes as it related to what was going on right after it. I couldn't believe what else I, I kind of could have, but what was said of Bunny and Peter afterwards, it was disparaging. You know what I mean? To know that they started where they were and it ended up like that. They definitely could have and should have had a conversation um, so that all of that stuff could have been resolved. Sometimes we carry these soul ties and these soul ties are not just only in into like relationships. They come, they could come in personal relationships when you build something with somebody, right? Um, it doesn't have to just be sexual soul ties, right? So as brothers that were coming from so far for them to end on such a sour note, it, it wasn't that necessarily the best thing to, to see because what was the reason you started singing in the first place? What was the music that you, what was the message that you wanted to give to the people? One thing that Bob, there was a, a, a thing, I don't think I shared it here when he said um, his life is not for himself. His life is for the people. And the Bible tells you to love your neighbor as you do yourself. That command means you have to love yourself. Sometimes we want to change the world so much that we forget that we need to also love ourselves because how can we then express and extend true love if we're not modeling it for ourselves? So I think to a certain degree in that conversation, something was missed 
and that the end of his days, at the end of his life, those who were surrounding him weren't loving him as they did themselves because it indicated to a certain degree they didn't love themselves either. So hopefully, you know, again, there's so many takeaways from it. Hopefully, you know, you continue to share it in the comment section below. Let me see. Tate is still up here. So let me see if the, her mic is working and uh, before we go. Uh. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. I'm I was going to sound so it's like 5 a.m. in the city, but I wanted to talk about two interviews. And then it's muffled a little bit. Oh, can you hear me better Yeah, now? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. So I wanted to talk about two interviews that I saw and then wrap it up with like the end of the books. Uh, oh. And I also wanted to thank you for this series. I, f I feel like I've traveled back in time. Like okay. before the this, I watched a movie with um on February, and I I was aware of Bob Marley's music, but I wasn't like I didn't really know much about him. I think I told you last time. Right. Um, so I think the movie and your channel has helped me learn so much about him. Um, so there was there's two interviews that I watched. There's one that was done in 1980. Um, it's Bob Marley and the Whalers and the I threes. They were in the U.S. And um, I don't know if you've watched it, but they, the, so the journalists are like a, a bunch of, or the interviewers are a bunch of black Americans. And then they start off the, one of the journalists starts off the interview by asking uh, Bob, like what's the role of the Rasta woman or the woman I in saw reggae? That one. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> so like I, I am, like I watched till the end and then I don't know if you noticed how mad Bob got when Rita was asked to come up and talk. <laughs> and then he that, looks, is that the one where he looks and he goes to Judy and he was like, oh, Rita is not here. And then he was asking Judy to answer the question. Is that the interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that interview, that interview, I was just laughing to myself because I, you like as an audience, you get to see like his anger side, <laughs> I was like, I, I, maybe it was his guilty conscience, maybe because the way they were asking the question, maybe he didn't want Rita to come and. No, that quite, that was there because if there was an earlier interview from the 70s and he's at mm -hmm. Hope Road and he kind of has that same energy when asked mm -hmm. about women. So I think it was mm -hmm. something that was already pre-existing, not necessarily, you know. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, I think it was already there. <laughs> <laughs> They asked him, I'm sorry, they asked him like, oh, can your woman have more than one man? And then he was oh. like, no, oh, can't one them kind of question that with me. So it was kind of <laughs> the same energy, but go ahead. Oh my gosh. And, and then the second interview was done last year. Um, it's with Neville and uh, Ellen Cole and Judy Mort. Um, and so in that interview, like the... Ellen Cole. Ellen Cole has been talking about doing a book for like more than ten years. <laughs> so, but hopefully he'll come out with his book. But um, after finishing Don and Sadella's book and Rita's book, it was I found it very interesting because the interviewer asked him like, "Who do you think was a better manager for Bob?" And um, Alan said that Don, that Don Taylor was his best manager. Oh. And and he said at the time, you know, he may have been doing things to the side and and stuff, but he said that like Don Taylor really cared about Bob. And he said that like at the time in the 70s, the American government and the CIA was watching Bob and they got to find that out. Um, and so he wasn't able to book huge stadiums in the US like he was in Europe. Mm. So he was only booking like university arenas. Okay. And um, and he said that Don Taylor would work overtime to market him to like the youth in the in the U.S., which was pre pretty much his audience, like university students, which mm. makes sense because like in the Marley documentary, you learn that that's what how he met his last girlfriend, Pascaline. She was a university student at UCLA. Um. But yeah, I found that really interesting that he was giving Don his flowers and, and, and not Neville Garrick was just like, no, he was a bad person. He talked about how um, Don really hated having him, like whenever there was a meeting, um, yeah, managerial meeting. Yeah, yeah he would one. ask him to leave and stuff. <laughs> I saw that one. But you know what's interesting, what I found on the back of mm. uh, Don Taylor's book, he put mm. a little excerpt 
and I found this curious. He says, we act for Miss Rita Marley, Miss Chris, Mr. Chris Blackwell, Mr. Neville Garrett, and other members of the Marley family. We wish to warn you that if the book does libel any of our clients, our instructions are to file an action against you without further notice, seeking both damages and injunction relief. And it's sound by attorney at law, Myers, Fletcher, and Gordon. So the question is, they had an issue with this book coming out, right? Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. puts on the back of the book, if I'm lying, right? They sent the letter. <laughs> so the question is, did they ever sue Don Taylor? Because their lawyer said, if we catch you for liable, which is you wrote yeah. it down and it was lies, then they would sue you without further warning. Well, we don't, I, didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't hear of Don Taylor getting sued. So the question is, what's going on? I don't think, no, I don't think he was in mind because a lot of things that he talked about were like repeats, some of them were repeated by Sedella. And right. That's why I'm cross referencing because yeah. a lot of it was repeated. He does go into Neville Garrick in the book, and that's probably why Neville didn't like it. Uh, mm -hmm. He does say one or two things about Neville. Mm -hmm. He says mm -hmm. one or two things about Skill Co. He talk about everybody. Let me, let me just mm -hmm. keep it up. He talks about everybody. But thank you so and, much, Kate. Yeah. Anything else? And, yeah, I wanted to say one thing that I did like about the book, because I saw, like, on social media, some people were skeptical about his book because of, like, the beating. But I like that he was not biased. Like, I didn't find him to be biased against Bob or biased exactly. towards Bob. I yeah. found it to be completely, like, open and honest. That's what I found as well. I, so I'm really thankful that he got a chance to read it, to tell his story, whether people believe it or not. I I. I believe it because I did not. I was actually surprised. I thought he was going to be bashing Bob the whole time. <laughs> but he really gives Bob his flowers. And I feel like the only part where he strongly judges Bob's character is with his treatment with Rita. Right. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. The book read to me like this is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it read like. It's like, well, this is this is what happened. This is what I saw. This is what I know. You know, and then the parts yeah. that he knows. It, it comes across as he knows. Yeah. Okay. Then the last point is like, um, it was it was really sad when I was reading Sedella's book at the end when he talked about his friends, what you were talking about tonight, because that really broke my heart. Okay, there are lots of parts that broke my heart, but that broke my heart because this is a man who opened up to his home. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he had he could be like every any other rich person because he was he had a lot of money for his time as well. Um, but he really opened up his home for this people. And I, he trusted this people. He talked like his uh, cultural and religious beliefs with these people. And for him to be in his like most vulnerable time in Germany, to be sick, to be dying. And then they had like, um, when I read Sadella's book, I remember she talked about how uh, Rita put a recorder under the kitchen yes, table. Yes, the recorder. And Don and then Dom talks about that in his book as well, because I think after Bob died, she played him the recorder from Germany. Yeah. yeah. And the way they were talking about him, like, oh, can't, can't he die any quicker? We want to get the money, all this. And she talked about how Ellen Cole was, you know, he, he, I think she said that she, she, he was pretty much eating up all the Jamaican food that was being brought in, and then he just left it to his friends. Yes. Yeah. That's what, that's it, what it does. Mm -hmm. right, it was so heartbreaking because I was like, man, like he really opened up his home to this people and his life. Yeah. I don't know. That's such a huge backstab. I, I think that was so sad. It did. Mm -hmm. I agree. And thanks for reminding me. I'm going to read that and then I'm going to boogie. I'm going to read that little <laughs> part that you just referenced so mm -hmm. that we can sum up the aftermath, friends, families, and foes. And then we're mm -hmm. going to go ahead and get some shut eyes. So thank you so much for that, Tate. And thank for your insight on the Bye, series. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you. So shout out to everybody who just joined us. Tate just reminded me. So I'm going to read that really quickly. I didn't get to that part because I stopped short of it. But for the recorder tape, the deceiver tape, it says, this is on page 195 of Don Taylor's book. It says, it was about this time that Rita made me listen to what she called the deceiver's tape. Apparently while Bob was being treated at the ISIL's clinic, he had one day left a tape running, recorder running under his bed. What was captured on the tape alarmed Bob deeply. Comments like, why him no hurry up and dead so we can't get some of the money? Or I'm a deserve it is for him fault. 
were recorded on the tape, what was shocking was that they came from the mouths of range of insiders, band members, cooks, 12 tribe families, people who were supposed to be close to Bob. I now fully understand the frantic call I received from Bob in Switzerland. So that would have been interesting, but that was the tape that was just referenced. It says, despite the fact that I had pretty well made up my mind about the matter, Rita was still displaying a great deal of anxiety about whom I would choose to pass the estate on to. And I had no doubt she meant the tape to influence my decision. So the people, and if you look at who were the, who was there, just read the part who was there, <laughs> read who was there and what they were saying. And that may have fed into why he felt like, you know what? I ain't even going to write. No, you know, he decides he's not even going to write a will. Wow. 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 So with that said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank everybody for letting your voice be heard. I want to thank everybody for, you know, just keeping the thing up lively. It's a beautiful thing. I'm enjoying myself. Just like you guys, I went on a trip. You know what I mean? I was in nine miles. I was there when Omariah was knocking on the door, when City was laid up with Norval. I was there when Bob was over there with Miss Gray. You know, every step of the way, you know, I'm reading it, but I'm also enjoying it. And it was definitely an adventure. And I, and I know more than I ever knew about this topic. So I'm ever grateful for you guys just coming in every day and giving the vibes, giving the comments, giving everything. So... <laughs> Did the Bada say poor Bob? She didn't send us out on a reader note. Poor Bob. Cha. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And we will talk again if you've missed any of the series. Somebody said they're gonna watch it from the top. It's all in the in, in the series playlist. Um, yeah, skill code was definitely there. Uh it's all in the series playlist, and we are going to be going into Marcus Garvey. But before we do. We're going to lay a little foundation with this colorism in the Caribbean because that is also the backdrop of the Marcus Garvey's conversation. Leah said, thank you, Professor Amuna. <laughs> I saw that the other day. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing history class used to make me go to sleep because they have no vibe. You understand? You got to put some sauce on it. You got to put some sauce on it so that we retain the information. Oh, he did? Bob's trumpet player wrote a book? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay, drop the link to the book in the in the comment section below, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and boogie now. Everybody have a blessed day. Okay, let me play the Hey Pumpkin with something there before we go. Let me play the commercial. You know, we have to support the thing, support the thing. All right, everybody. Have a blessed night. One. Listener, all of this jokes and reading got me feeling a little hungry. Do you guys come with your snacks ready or do you think it's time for an ital food break? The Ross and him Empress say, yeah, ital food break. So listen, this is Imuna. And not only do I read and write novels, I also do a little something, something. Well, a kind of big something in the kitchen, right? So I wrote this amazing hay pumpkin cookbook. Inside, pumpkin seed milk, carrot punch, smoothie, listener, even jerk tofu strips. But the tofu is made from pumpkin seeds. So join me on a culinary adventure with the pumpkin seed as we explore the benefits of this green superfood. You already know, potassium, zinc, it is loaded and highly beneficial. Again, a high source of iron, zinc, magnesium, vitamin E, and it helps boost the immune system. This book, as well as Island Twist, is available on Amazon today. So go on over and let's get back to the story.